Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's uh, pray and we'll begin. Would somebody from the class like to lead in prayer as we start out today? Thank you, Father Lord, that we come into your presence, Lord. Thank you, Father Lord, that whenever we want, we can come to you and pray to you, Lord. Lord, as we are going to start our class, Lord, talk to us throughout the class, Lord, and reveal your word and reveal your uh, presence, Lord. And Lord, I want to pray, whatever we are going to study, whatever we are going to learn, Lord, uh, I pray that uh, we can apply those things into our life, Lord. In mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Amen. Amen. Thank you. So uh, in the last class, we learned about prophetic prayer. If you could share, you know, your understanding of what exactly we discussed, that would be helpful. At least a couple of lines, if you can tell us what did we learn? What is prophetic prayer? In your own words. Yes, so when God gives us a vision, uh, we can pray, okay? What else? What else is prophetic prayer? Why do we call it prophetic? Sorry? Uh, we listen to the heart of God? Hear, okay, hearing the heart of God, correct? So prophetic is to hear from the Lord. So our prayers are based on what God wants us to Pray for. That's why we are calling it prophetic prayer. Otherwise, we'll just go with our list. But when we say it is prophetic, we are listening to God and we are praying according to what God wants. So that is prophetic prayer. And uh, how is it helpful? How is it helpful? Just simple. Few lines you tell me. How is prophetic prayer helpful? Yes? It can prevent... Prepare, prepare. Okay. Yeah. It can prepare us for what's coming. Okay. So that we don't miss out. Sure. Any any other way? Prophetic prayer. I want everyone to try. See, the best way to learn is recall. If there's no recall, that means nothing has gone inside. And if you don't try, if you don't make an effort to recall, it will never register. So please try your best. Doesn't matter if you can't say the whole answer, say something. Okay, and I really want response from the whole class because everyone was there in the last class, so everyone should answer when we are asking questions. Some recall. Put some effort. Don't wait for your friend to answer. That's not a good way of learning at all. Yes? Okay, to fulfill the given prophecy in our lives, we're praying for that to happen. Right, very good. To release his destiny. Okay. In to, our lives. To, yes, yes. Uh, just a moment, uh, Brother Mavai. Uh, you said? Destiny. To release his destiny. Okay. So uh, uh, here in class, we had one of our students say to, uh, to reveal the purposes of God. So God reveals and we pray that through. And similar point, uh, Brother Mavai is saying to reveal the destiny so god will do that because he he knows that we require that information so he will give us that information and we pray that through uh, anything yes very good yes so intercessory prayers that means when somebody is in need of prayer we can pray for them because god has already spoken to us and told us that these things are happening right so these are all the uses or the advantage of prophetic prayer. So you and I, every day we need to be open. We have a few things to pray through, but in addition to that, we are open. We say, God, you speak to us, and if you put certain thoughts in our hearts, we will pray for it, and we will see God working when we pray it through. All right, so that is what prophetic prayer is about. Um, now let's move on to the next topic here, which is about persistence in prayer. So 
when we say persistence okay persistence is like um, you know i i've seen uh, kids when they pester their parents you know like i want ice cream i want ice cream i want ice cream right the parents tell them no 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 ice cream but what do they do they don't stop they no non stop they'll keep saying no i want i want i want the parents become so irritated <laughs> that they say okay take your ice cream is that what persistence in prayer is that we'll go to god we'll not stop we'll keep saying god i want i want i want i want i want god says no we say no way we will not stop lord we want we want we want and then what does god do i'm fed up take it is that persistence in prayer uh prem mic also because uh, online students can't hear you like it's written here twist god's hand to do something mm -hmm. he does not want to do so is that correct or wrong it's not correct but if i think if we are asking for the good thing okay so like at my childhood i wanted a ipod mm. so i was like continuously praying for one week i want an ipod i want an ipod so after one week i got it okay from my brother as a gift uh huh so it's like i wanted it god was saying that okay wait for a minute wait for some time wait for some time maybe he wants me to grow up uh, uh wants me to grow up mm. so then he can give it to me but i continuously prayed because of i was watching other people having it so maybe that's why sometime it's good sometime it's not we have to wait okay fine so in persistence in prem's experience he did keep asking god for something that he liked uh, but you know it it sorry <laughs> vinay vinay saying maybe his brother heard the prayer maybe right we don't know okay uh god wanted to graciously give it to you so you got it frame so we don't want to comment on that uh but the point that we're trying to make this morning is persistence in prayer is not begging it's not begging it's not like you know sometimes you have these unions in companies they'll put one shamiana or they'll put one a uh, nice shelter sit in front of the company and what they'll do is uh bhook hartal they'll not eat they'll not drink they sit there and they'll tell the the management you have to you have to you have to now that's not what persistence means as far as our relationship with god is concerned where we are sitting outside heaven and we are saying god if you don't do it we are not going to move from here so what is it about persistence that we have to understand okay we'll come to that we'll come to that so let's read two passages and then we will try to define what persistence in prayer is so one is from luke chapter 11 there are two parables that jesus spoke let's look at those parables so somebody will have to read luke 11 verses 5 to 8 and another person luke 18 verses 1 to 8 so please take the mic and read it aloud jesus said and he to said them, to them which of you shall have a, a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him friend let me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and i have nothing to set before him and he will answer from within and say do not trouble me the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot try to give to you i say to you though he will not try and give to him because he he is his friend yet because of his persistence he will rise and give him as many as he needs mm. yes thank you uh, thank you juliana for that so this is an incident where there is a friend who is in need late at night so he goes to his friend and you know he asks uh i have a visitor so uh, please provide for me and uh, you know that that person says no i can't right now my family is in bed we are resting but because of the constant 
asking you know at midnight so he says lend me three loaves because of the constant asking what does he do ultimately he rises up and uh, he gives this person what he needs so why is jesus giving us this particular example or parable to teach us about faith to teach us about faith okay um can we say to teach us about persistence mm. it's not so much to do with you know this friend not willing to give him the bread late in the night he's tired all those details are there but the focus is persistence the other friend who is in need it's, he's not giving up he's saying no i need help me i know you're tired i know but where else will i go you only have to help me so persistence so we understood persistence from this parable let's look at one more parable uh, maybe prem can can read it from luke 18 verse 1 to 8 then jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up he said in certain town there was a judge who neither feared god nor cared what people thought thought and there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with that plea grant me justice against my adversary for some for some time he refused but finally he said to himself even though i don't fear god or care what people think yet because this widow keeps bothering me i will see that she gets justice so that she wouldn't eventually come and attack me and the lord said listen to what the unjust judge says and will not god bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night will he keep putting them off i tell you he will see that they get justice and quickly however when the when the son of man comes he will he find faith on the earth okay so again when we look at this passage there are all the details of this lady wanting justice she goes to the judge and uh, the passage says unjust meaning he he is not the kind who will do justice to such a judge she is begging okay she is persistent but i want us to focus on the last part from verse 6 let's focus it says then the lord said hear what the unjust judge said and shall god not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him though he bears long with them i tell you that he will avenge them speedily speedily okay and then the rest of it goes so the point is when we go to god and we believe him to do something and we are persistent it says that god will give the answer quickly then why persistence in both of these instances you had people who are unwilling first friend is unwilling i'm tired now why are you bothering me friend is unwilling to give bread to the person who's asking in the second case unjust judge who is unwilling because the lady is troubling him he says you know what i don't want her to come again so i will give justice so both these people are unwilling people but what is the contrast god is willing that's the point so we cannot take the examples of these unwilling people and think that god is also like that and we have to pester him right we have to beg him we have to frustrate him only then he is going to give the answers to us no because who is god god is not unjust he is not a wicked ruler he is our father in heaven give us this day our daily bread so he is the father he is the provider he is the one who cares for us so he will readily answer that's the difference we cannot take the examples of the unwilling friend or the unjust ruler 
it's not fair to look at god like that but the point is in some of our prayers there is the element of persistence it's not because god is not answering it's not because god is slow it's not because god is not willing there are other reasons you all understood yeah so there is persistence we need persistence both the parables are teaching us a lesson to keep asking but not because god is not willing or that god is too hard and we can't get what we want from god now why is it that sometimes we feel like god you're not doing it how much i'm asking but still you're not giving it you're not saying yes why does that happen you know i remember long ago this was long long ago and some of us uh, you know at that time we were just growing in the lord and i had a friend and she wanted a particular job okay and she was not at all skilled for that job she was not all of us could tell that she was not skilled for that job but she wanted it so she started fasting fasting you know a little too much fasting praying asking god and uh, she went for the interviews a couple of times and they said no it's not going to work out it's not going to work out but she's not ready to listen still fasting 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 no till i get the job i'm not going to stop but everything is telling you that that's not god's plan for you then why are we being persistent you know sometimes we try to push for things which is not in god's plan which is not in god's purpose ultimately now she's working she's doing other things she's not doing that because that was not meant for her and slowly she understood but it take it took time so why is it that sometimes we don't get what we are asking for even though we ask for it a lot because we have not determined the will of god maybe we are asking something which is not at all the will of god and it's not happening and we feel like i have to push so much i have to work so hard you know i have to fast i have to do this i but did we take time to assess whether it is in god's heart his plan his will for us or not that's the place where many of us get stuck it's not at all god's will and then we try to persevere we try to persist we try to keep going back to god it will not help because it's not in the will of god for us okay so that is where we will not receive or you know ultimately if we are being so disobedient uh then god also says okay fine take it but it's not as a blessing it doesn't come as a blessing so we need to be careful that when we are persisting regarding any prayer point let it be the will of god then it makes sense for us to hold on okay so coming back to what we were discussing god is not the unjust ruler he will not make us wait and suffer and all of that there are other reasons why the answer is taking time everyone's fine with it yeah any questions any anything to discuss before we move ahead hello i um i just want maybe to make a comment concerning what yes, you just Juliana? highlighted um yes. there because i think this has been something that has been taught in so many forums that we need to persist to nag to nag because of the understanding that comes from i think the way then we see these people persisting and the widow persisting um and then the friend persisting standing there knocking 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 so i think the interpretation comes from the side of these ones who are asking and so we all it has been taught and so most of us really believe that that is how we should go before god yes in that persistence so thank you for making that clarification and yeah, bringing sure. that new perspective yeah thank you so persistence is good uh, just that we need to be clear on whether or not it is god's will or not otherwise you know we we are going into that mode of begging nagging um, which is not fruitful so yes um uh, thank you for that any yes question does persistence means 
that we have to keep our prayer in the ear of God, like keep on telling him, like, okay, keep on like putting in front of him. Yes, that's what it means. Like, if I'm praying, I want a job. Mm -hmm. So keep on telling him, like, just uh, unko memorize karna mm -hmm. I am praying to for remind, this. to remind, yeah, yeah to, to remind, remind him. him. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. God, uh, do you remember this? I I was praying for this, like that. Yeah, a normal like talkative prayer, like. Yes. Um, okay. So, uh, are you? Is there a question attached to that? I'm asking, yeah, question mm -hmm. attached. Like, is it like that? Persistence means. Uh, I'm just trying to look to for keep, one. To keep, uh, to like a reminder mm -hmm. for God. Yes. So there is a verse in Isaiah 43 and verse 26. It says, put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. So God doesn't mind when we remind him. He's okay. If we come back and say, God, remember, this is your promise. This is what you said. He's quite open to that. He says, okay, come, remind me. No problem. So we can remind him. Isaiah. Isaiah 43, 26. Put me in remembrance, it says. Okay. Now, having said this, why are we bringing up that same prayer point before God? Like, I need a job. I need a job. I need a job. Because Jesus is the one who told us, ask in my name. Okay. So we are following the command of Jesus. Sometimes people say, Does God, doesn't God already know? Why should I say? God knows. And yet Jesus is the one who taught us to pray. And he said, ask and you will receive. What we may do is, we have it in our hearts, but we never really pray it through. Well, God is gracious. Many times even then, the answers come. But what should be the regular way? We should say it. We should ask for it. We should pray that through. And, uh, you know, in matters like job and all that, uh, you're asking again and again and again. No problem. By faith, till you have the peace. You remember in, the, in faith, we studied that. Till we have the assurance that we have received the answer in our spirit. We can keep asking. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. So that's how persistence works. And one should ask. And that's the command of Jesus. He said, you ask. So that's why we are asking. Ma'am. Yes. Is the prayer of Jacob is persistence? Prayer of Jacob? Jacob yeah. um, which one? Uh, at, at the value of a book. A book, a book. A book. Um, just tell me the exact reference. 32? Yeah. Okay. Genesis 32. Genesis 32. Yeah, the one uh, where he's wrestling with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, persistent. Yes, we can say that because uh, he's not giving up. No? Yeah. Like he's wrestling and he does not give up. And to make him give up, uh, the angel had to uh, touch him. And then he has a limp. Only then he gives up. So, yes, it's persistence. Ma'am, how to check uh, when we praying mm -hmm. uh, in persistence, how to check the God's will? If uh, we... If we praying continuously, God will answer for some time. Mm. Uh, if it not God's will, uh, I have been seen an incident. One of my family friend who is to pray uh, persistence, but God say it's not good for you, mm. even though he is praying for that. God answered, but 
but the answer uh, after few days what god's give it becomes problem for for him so mm -hmm. how to find the will of god about that yeah um so there are many ways to know the will of god uh, santosh but let me quickly take us to romans 12 uh and it this is all there in your ministers foundation class so it might be a repetition for you but i'll just say few thoughts and then we can move on verse 2 romans 12 verse 2 it says and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god okay so though in the english it sounds like these are three separate words it's it's pointing to the same thing it's not three wills there's only one will of god which is good acceptable perfect so we can ask the question regarding any prayer which we are praying right is it good is it acceptable to god is it perfect in god's sight ask this prayer ask this question if it is not if it is not good if it is not acceptable to god if it is not perfect in his sight answer is very clear it is not god's will okay so in most of the situations we can use this technique and we can say you know is it is something good the choice that i'm making you know is it acceptable to god is it perfect if it's not it's not god's will i'm not going to ask for it now there are situations where getting the answer to this question is not so simple isn't it so in those situations um you know we can we can trust god for many other things first of all uh, this is there in that book receiving god's guidance first is our knowledge of the word of god that is the primary thing the how much we know the scriptures that will give us like it will orient you what is god's will or not okay so knowing the word of god secondly uh, being very sensitive in the spirit uh, where when the holy spirit bears witness with our spirit we know yes god is saying it or no i'm feeling uncomfortable in my spirit god is not saying it he's saying no to it so that is the second best thing and of course you have other things like god will give a vision uh, in a dream you remember uh, like uh, paul gets a vision one macedonian man says come to us you know preach to us so that's god's way of telling him paul my will is you go to macedonia you want to go here and there you know he wanted to go to asia he wanted to go to another place bithynia but the holy spirit says no 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 that's not my will for you right now you have to go to macedonia but how did that come through a vision through a prophetic word through an angel so there are many ways in which god can confirm it but first exercise is ask whether it is good acceptable perfect does that help okay nice all right so we shall move on unless there's anything you all want to ask great so we've understood that persistence is good but the first uh, important thing is to know whether something is god's will or not then persevere without that if we persevere it's not helpful okay so know the will of god and persevere and also we should have the attitude where it's not like you know it's a difficult thing because god is good he is not a wicked ruler he is not an unjust ruler so it's easy actually to persist with god because we know that god is good he will do it in the right time but he wants me to keep praying and i should not give up so there are some scriptures here in our notes from the book of hebrews that tell us that we must not give up so hebrews 6:12 it says imitate those who through faith and patience have received the promises so that means we can look at the lives of people in scripture and in real life who are a good example 
of receiving God's promise. So whatever it is that I want to do in my life, I can look at somebody that I respect, I honor and say, wow, you know, how come this person has been able to do it? How come they have been able to receive it? What did they do? They are example of faith. They are example of patience. I learn from that and then I apply it. And similarly, uh, Hebrews 10, 35, you know, it, it says, hold on to your confession of faith. It may take a while, but don't give up and God will be faithful to do things for us. So patience and holding on and asking God uh, is what is going to give us the answers. And one must keep praying. There are a few more scriptures in our notes here that tell us that uh, persevere in prayer, continuing steadfastly in prayer, Romans 12, 12. And so we keep praying, we keep asking and we stop we do not stop uh, trusting God. Okay, now let's answer the question, uh, why should we persevere in God? What are the reasons? Let's, let's um, imagine that something is the will of God. Okay, we've determined it. This is the will of God. Now, when something is the will of God, why is there a delay? Okay, timing... See, the question is, first we said, whether something is will of God or not, we have to clarify. Okay, now we have clarified. It is God's will. But answer is not coming. We are not receiving the promise. What is the issue? <laughs> okay, God is checking our patience. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Satan is interrupting. God is uh, letting us grow. We, we have to co-work with God. Okay. Hmm? Yes. Okay. God has a big plan. So we have to wait. All right. Yeah. Sure. So fine you know I, I see where you all are coming from uh, so let's try to answer this question why are there still delays there are many reasons but some of the common reasons now many of you said god wants us to wait and you know uh, god wants us to grow develop ourselves well all that is there and uh, you know that will anyway happen because when we read what James writes. He says that uh, uh, patience, when it completes its full work in us, it develops character. So there are certain things in life that you cannot do shortcut. If we do the shortcut, we will not get the results. So even God knows that our character is built by patience. So he will take us through that journey. Okay, But it's not like you know he's troubling us, he's testing us. It's not like that. It's just part of our growth journey that all of us have to develop these, these things uh, to be effective as believers. Now, having said that, let's look at some common reasons why there can be delays to the promise of God. One of you said timing, timing. So we know that God is outside of time. We are the ones who are in time. You know, we age, time passes by, life goes on, all that is in the world. But God is in heaven and there's no concept of time. He's outside time. Okay. But God has a particular moment, you can say, in his heart when he wants to do certain things. For example, when we consider the birth of Jesus, if we go back to the book of Genesis, in Genesis chapter 3, there is a promise where it says that the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. So where did this promise come? When the earth was created. In, in the garden of Eden, just now the world has been created. And what did God promise? I am going to send the seed of the woman. Who is the seed of the woman? Jesus. Okay. God has promised. 
100 years went by. Did Jesus come? No. 500 years went by. Did Jesus come? No. 1000 years went by. Did Jesus come? No. What is happening? What is happening? Right? But let's let's consider one scripture. Okay, Galatians 4.4. 4. Can somebody read it out for us? Uh, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. Hmm, okay. So it says... But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. So 2,000 years passed by and Paul writes to the Galatians, when was the fullness of time? 2,000 years later. When did God promise? Garden of Eden. Why didn't Jesus come immediately? God has a timing. And the Bible says, in the fullness of time, there are many things that work in the fullness of time. And we call it the kairos. Or, you know, God's appointed time. When God has desired, you know, Jesus, the book of Revelation, uh, we, we see uh, the scriptures say, behold, I come quickly. And we are saying, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. But we are still here. God has an appointed time. When Jesus spoke about the end of the age, he said, only the Father knows the time. There is an appointed time for things to happen. The fullness of time. The same thing applies in our lives. We can tell God, God, fast forward. You know, make it now. Nowadays, when people watch the videos, also they'll make it 2.5x speed quickly. Let the lecture go on fast. Finish fast so that I can reach the end. Okay, but we can't do that with God. We have to be patient because there is a Kairos time, there is a right time, there is the best time. And only in that time, God will do what He has promised. All right, so that is why we have to have some patience. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. What did Jesus say? Can someone quickly go back to that verse and read? And one person can read in Hindi also, please. Okay, so read it in English, read it in Hindi. Let's see what it says. Luke 18, verse 1. Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village. Uh, Luke, sorry, sorry. Luke 18, one, 18 verse 1. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you read it into the mic, please? Yeah, because the online students can't hear. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Okay. So because there are such promises where we have to wait on the Lord, we must not get discouraged. Jesus said that. Always pray. Don't lose heart. Men always ought to pray and don't lose heart. Wait for the appointed time. Anyone can read it in Hindi? फिर उसने इसके विषय में कहा कि नित प्रार्थना करना और हियावना छोड़ना चाहिए उसने यह दृष्टांत कहा Hmm. Okay, so we all understand, right? So those, those of you who are more comfortable uh, with, you know, this language, you, we can see Jesus is encouraging us because we need to be strong and we should not lose heart. There are matters in life where we are not going to get the answers immediately. We have to wait for God's fullness of time. Uh, I, I think when we study Minister's Foundation, we'll also read about the life of Paul. And uh, over there, we understand that Paul had an encounter on the road to Damascus. 
but it was 17 years before Barnabas brings him back to the church of Antioch and his ministry starts like officially. But we can ask the question, God, why 17 years? Why can't Paul do it? Just now he got saved. Let him start doing the ministry, no. But there were many challenges. People were not ready to accept him. Maybe he needed some growth in his personal character. So we don't know all the reasons God chose to launch him at the right time. And the right time came after 17 years. So like that, even in our lives, we are in a hurry and we are telling God, God, you have to do it. You have to do it tomorrow. You promised me, so you have to do it. God says, I will do it. But in my time, you have to wait. So when we are waiting, what to do? Everything that we learned just now, pray steadfastly. Keep praying, keep asking, keep thanking, keep worshipping and saying, God, I know you're going to do it at the right time. I praise you, I worship you, I thank you. Don't lose heart, don't be discouraged. That's what Jesus is speaking to us. So there is a correct time or the right time when God is going to do things in our lives and we need to wait for it. Now the second reason why um, there is delay is again, one of you said demonic interference. So demons can try to stop God's promise. Satan will always try to stop God's plan. You remember when Jesus was being born? Uh, around that time, Herod ordered. He said, okay, I'll kill all the, the you know, male children that are born. When Moses was going to be born, same thing. Satan is against the purposes of God. And when he knows what God is going to do, what will he do? Interrupt. Right? Interrupt uh, and... Uh, try to bring some opposition to that purpose. So he does that even in our lives. That's not a surprise. We, we don't get surprised. Oh, why? That's how it is. But we need to be careful. We need to be alert. And uh, that's another reason why we have to keep praying. Satan will do his best to stop God's promise from reaching us. Okay, so the example given in our notes is from the life of Daniel. Daniel prayed uh, and the answer was given immediately, but the answer was stopped. By who? By demonic principalities in the second heavens. So when it was stopped, how did Daniel break through? We see that he prayed. He prayed. 21 days he prayed. So when we are praying, persistent prayer is actually warfare. We think that, oh, God is not working, so I'm just praying, praying. But that's also warfare. When we are praying, what's happening? God sent angel Michael and he engaged in battle with those principalities. And then after the victory, the answer came. But why did all this happen? Daniel was praying. So persistent prayer is warfare. When we don't stop praying, God is destroying the demonic attacks over our lives. That's another reason why we have to pray. We should not stop praying. Okay? So demons may come and they may try to stop God's plan for our lives. That's another reason why there are delays. And finally, uh, the third reason is completing all obedience. So this simply means that when we don't complete all that God wants us to do, there are delays. Think about the life of Moses. Do you think God wanted Moses to be in the wilderness 40 years? Yes or no? I can hear yes, no, both. Okay, anyway. Uh, so God did not want Moses to be in the wilderness 40 years. Why did he land up there? Because he did something of his own will. He went and killed an Egyptian. When he came to know that God wants him to be a deliverer, there was no patience. He thought, okay, I am the deliverer. I will do it. He went and in his own strength, he went and killed an Egyptian. He thought all the Jews will be happy with him. But 
they blamed him they said oh this is the murderer so he ran from there he ran and he had to hide from pharaoh 40 years he had to hide whose fault was it it's not god's fault moses is in the wilderness desert place god why is my life like this it's not god's mistake moses choice he did it so he ended up but what did god do even in the wilderness god was grooming him god was working in his life god was developing him so it's very interesting to see that when he was in pharaoh's palace and he killed the egyptian he was very proud he was very self dependent he thought i can do everything and he was trying to do it but finally when god encounters him at the burning bush he says god i can't speak i stammer right why don't you send and god says okay i will send aaron you go with him but what has happened to his confidence he's come to realize you know what i can't do this on my own and god is saying don't worry i am with you so all his pride came down but did god want him to go through the wilderness experience no not at all had he not been you know so self reliant who knows without the wilderness god may have called him to lead the people out of egypt okay but it happened like that so there are times in our lives where god wants to take us to the next level but we are not yet ready we are not fully obedient we are not fully yielded and god says i won't be able to do what i want to do with your life unless you are ready so i have to wait till you are ready so it's almost like god is waiting for us to be ready so when we are fully obedient that's when god can say okay now you're ready come let's go to the next level so there are times when we are not fulfilling all obedience which becomes the problem and god is not able to take us to the next level okay maybe there's not enough faith or there's not enough yielding submission to god uh, uh not enough knowledge i mean imagine if god has called us to be a preacher and we know earlier prophetic word god has already revealed it to us but here we are we are not taking the word of god seriously we are not learning we are not studying and after few years we say god you promised that i am going to be a you know i am going to be a teacher of the word god says yeah but you didn't make any effort to learn how can i uh, you know even if you try it's going to be hard are you all understanding what i'm trying to say yeah so it's not the delay is not from god's side it's also because sometimes we are reluctant we are disobedient we are slow and uh, that hinders the work of god in our lives so these are the three major reasons timing god's timing we have to wait for god's timing second is uh, there can be demonic interception third one is obedience completing all obedience so uh, let's go ahead take a break let's come back we'll we can discuss more after the class if there are questions and we will continue thank you everyone just